Okay. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. So this week we are doing a video that I feel is super, super relevant for this time of year because we're going to talk about how you can still go on vacation if you have reptiles. I decided to make this video because number one, we're going on vacation in six days. And number two, I made this video a few years ago, but there's a lot of new people here since a few years ago. So around this time of year, I get a lot of questions about this exact topic. So I thought I would do a new updated video. So just to preface anything I say here, we are talking about a week max in this video. We are not talking about any kind of long-term couple week vacation situations. We are just talking about a couple days to a week at max. And three big things that we are going to be paying attention to in this video is how long you're gonna be gone, what type of animal that you have, being prepared ahead of time. Those are three topics that are gonna come up over and over again, so prepare yourself for that. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by The Dubia Dude. Make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at thedubiadude.com and to find out how I was super impressed with this company very recently. Let's get started. So first things first, my absolute biggest advice is timer switches. Timer switches are a lifesaver and they are going to make your entire vacation so much easier. Reptiles need lights. Most of them do. They need heat lights to thermoregulate and or they need UV lights so they can properly absorb things like calcium. What a timer switch does for those of you who may be new to all this, it basically allows you to set up what time you want your lights to turn on and what time you want them to turn off and it just does it for you. I use these on every single one of my tanks. One of my favorite ones to use actually has eight total outlets on it. Four of them stay on at all times. Four of them are on the timer. So I can set heat pads on the always on and bulbs on the timer switches. And so everything in my house is regulated without me having to go around and turn on 20 animals lights every single day. And if you want to get fancy with your timer switch, you can even get smart timers. I have a couple of these in my house for tanks that are kind of by themselves, but these are super cool too because they allow you to control the timers from your phone. So if you are in the next state, you can just pull up on your phone and make sure that that light turned on or turned off appropriately or just manually turn it on and off if that's what you want to do. They make life super easy too. The next super, super big thing is water. No matter how long you're going to be gone, your animal needs water. So it is super important that you make sure that your reptiles have a big enough water dish, that it's going to hold enough water for a couple days, or you have some sort of self-watering dish like these ones. I've never used one of these, but I mean, they work for cats and dogs, so I'm sure that they are fine. Definitely test them before you leave though to make sure that everything is working appropriately. It's also super important if you have some kind of burrowing species that you make sure that your animal doesn't get under the water dish and they don't spill it. Because if you plan on your animal having three days worth of water and they knock it over in the first five minutes, it's not a good situation. So make sure that they have plenty of water. In the same realm of water, if your animal is a humidity loving creature, make sure that they have some form of getting humidity. So this might be having someone come in and spray the tanks down or investing in something like a fogger, which is going to keep that humidity up for you automatically. There are also drippers. A lot of people use drippers and this is a fantastic way that your animal can drink water. Drippers are my favorite. Every time I've tried to use them, they don't really up the humidity. They just kind of end up drowning out the whole tank. So make sure that you pick one and test it before you go on vacation. All right, so how do I go about making sure that my reptile is being fed? This is going to depend on what type of reptile you have and of the age of your reptile. So if we're looking at things like baby lizards, baby lizards are gonna be the most difficult because they need to eat every single day, especially when we look at things like bearded dragons who eat an obnoxious amount of food every single day. For these sorts of animals, the very best thing that you are going to be able to do is to have a family member or friend come into your house and feed your animal every day. And we will talk about that more in a little bit, but 
but other ways that you may be able to get around that if you are just going for a couple of days is by leaving lots of food in an escape proof dish. So this is definitely something else that needs to be tested beforehand because if you have a lizard that is just going to consume everything you put in front of it, looking at you bearded dragons, this isn't going to be helpful because they're gonna eat it all in one day and then have no food for the next day or two. But if your lizard paces themselves, which some do, my crocodile skink paces herself when she eats. If your lizard paces herself, this might be an option for you. There's also the options of things like these. I've never tested anything like these. I don't know how well they work, but it is a automatic reptile feeder. If that's something that you want, again, prepare in advance and test that out in advance to see if that is the right option for you. Adult lizards, these are gonna be much easier because most adult lizards don't eat every day as it is. Most adult lizards only eat a few times a week. So they are already going a couple or several days without eating. So that's gonna make life a lot easier for you. Let's say you're only gonna be gone for three days. I highly suggest you give them a really big meal before you leave. And then they're gonna be fine for those next three days as long as they have some access to water. And as long as you have their lights turning on and off automatically. If you're gonna be gone any longer than that, you're gonna have to look into some other options which again, we'll get to in just a few seconds. And snakes. Snakes are by far the easiest because snakes already only eat every week to two weeks. If you're gone for a week and you know that your snake is going to have enough water for that week, then you're good to go. Just hook those timer switches up, make sure their lights are coming on and off if they need lights. Make sure that you know their heat pad is going to be sufficient for that week. Make sure that they have water and that they're not gonna knock that water bowl over or use one of those refillable ones or do both. And then you are more than good to go for a few days. Well, L, I'm gonna be gone for longer than a few days. Okay, let's talk about other options. A few different options here for people that are gonna be gone longer than their reptile can handle themselves. We have having a family member or friend come in and take care of them. Paying them also helps immensely. You also have the option if it is better for that family member or friend to take your animal to them. Obviously this isn't gonna work if you have 20 animals, but if you just have a bearded dragon or just a leopard gecko, one or two animals, this might be an option and it might make a person feel better about taking care of the animal if they're not having to drive to your house every day. If you are going to take your animal to someone else's house, you don't have to take their whole setup. You can do a temporary bin setup for them as long as they have the appropriate lights and heat or however long you're gonna be gone it's fine. Throw a fake plant in there in a hide, maybe a human hide. Simple Dollar Tree hides are fine. A quick temporary setup is going to be fine for this situation. If you have something like a leopard gecko or crested gecko, I did a video a while ago that I will leave here all about temporary setups for animals where I just made Dollar Tree setups. Some people were super upset about that video because they thought that I was saying that people should just leave their animals in that forever. That is not the case. Temporary setups, taking them to someone else's house are Fantastic. You also can board your animal. A lot of local pet stores and sometimes places that normally board dogs and cats around this time of year when everyone is traveling, a lot of those places will board your animals for you. I don't know if they're doing it this year, but a couple years ago, Animal Tracks in Madison, for those people in this area, were actually boarding animals and you would just pay them by the day and they would watch your pets. And this was fantastic because Animal Tracks are super knowledgeable about the animals that they have. You know that you're leaving your animal in good hands. If that's an option for you, then make sure that whoever you're taking them to knows what they're doing, but that is always a fantastic option. And if you don't have either of those options, there are also websites like rover.com and care.com who have pet sitters for hire, and you can pay those people to come in and take care of your reptiles. Okay, so let's say that you have a friend in mind to take care of your animals, but they don't really know a lot about reptiles. How can you make it to where that person who is willing to watch your animal can watch your animal? Let's talk about making it easier for your pet sitter. Super important because if you make it easy for the pet sitter, then you probably have another pet sitter in the future and for all of your trips to come. And who knows, maybe at the end, they'll like reptiles a little bit more. For me, this person is my mom. My mom used to be terrified of reptiles and spiders and all of those things. And now she has no problem coming in and feeding and watering my animals which is fantastic. Hi, mom. Most important thing, leave care instructions. Do not expect to tell your pet sitter verbally everything that they need to know and then just remember it. A couple different ways you could do this. You could just 
type out or write out detailed care instructions for every single animal so that they can just flip through it. Or you can just leave post-it notes on the tanks with care information. I've actually done both of these things and both of these things definitely work. Things to put in those care instructions, what to feed your animals, when to feed your animals, how much to feed your animals, if they need to be sprayed down, how often they need to be sprayed down. Does your animal bite? Is it going to dart and scare this person and run away when they open the tank? Are there any specific locks that need to be locked on the tank? Is this animal an escape artist? Is it super important that they put a five pound weight on top of the tank? All of these things are super important to put into those care instructions. Also, make sure that all of the food items are easily accessible and labeled. Make sure that if they need to feed your snake rats, the rats aren't buried at the bottom of the freezer. Make sure if you have several different snakes that need to eat rats, that those rats are labeled small, medium, large, because you know this information, you know what you have, but the person coming in might not. If your reptile eats bugs, ask your pet sitter if they're okay with handling bugs. This is a very important thing to know before you leave for vacation. You're not gonna touch them? No, I'm not gonna touch them. Every time I touch them, they touch me. Oh well, yeah, that's usually, <laughs> that's usually how that's that an works. issue, okay? <laughs> If they are not okay with handling bugs, make sure that you have some sort of feeding tongs or something that they can use to handle them. If you don't have any feeding tongs, we sell them in our Etsy store, available right here. Shameless plug. For things like powdered gecko food, make sure that you have already prepared it. Don't make your pet sitter go and try to mix one part powder with two parts whatever. Just put it all in a travel size shampoo bottle so that they have enough for however long you're gonna be gone. And then they can just grab the shampoo bottle out of the refrigerator, squirt it in little bowls, and they're good to go. Have already treated water available to fill up water bowls and have pressurized spray bottles already filled up. If you use RepTiSafe, make sure you have bottles of water with RepTiSafe in it for them to fill the water bowls up. If you just use purified water, make sure to have that available. We don't want to send our pet sitter to the store to buy these things. We want to already have it all set up. And if you've done all of these things and you are still super worried about your reptiles, put in a security camera. A while back, I did a sponsored video for a security camera where I just watched my animals when I wasn't in the room and it was super, super cool. The point of that being that I could definitely see the appeal to having one of these in your reptile room or just in front of your bearded dragon's tank or whatever so that you could check on your animal when you're not there. If you position it right, you can see their water bowl. You can see if they have food left. You can see if their lights are coming on and off like they're supposed to. If you are a person that worries a lot about these things, this is going to give you peace of mind. And something like a cheap baby monitor that connects to your phone or Amazon sells a $25 blink camera, an indoor blink camera that connects to your phone and you can look at anywhere. These would be perfect for this situation. But that is it. That is all the tips I have for going on vacation without your reptiles. If you have any other suggestions, definitely leave that in the comments below because it will probably help someone else out. And hopefully I added a few more things different from this video than the one from a few years ago. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Doobie Dude. The Doobie Dude is such an awesome place to get Doobie Roaches for your reptiles. Doobie Roaches are super nutritious. They are super filling for your animal. They are cleaner than crickets. They are my favorite staple feeder. And the Doobie Dude has amazing customer service. They really care about their customers. Just a week ago, two weeks ago, there was an issue with the shipping facility that the packages that the Doobie Dude was sending out was going through. So the whole time he was constantly posting on Instagram updates to the customers to let them know exactly what was happening. He was even on the phone with the post office stations trying to figure out what was going on with these packages. He cares. Make sure if you do order from the doobiedoo.com, you use the code L to save 10% off of that entire order. Thank you so much to the doobiedoo.com. As always, if you haven't already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put in a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is for Miss Maggie for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out is for Diamond Subliminals for commenting on last week's video. If you guys did not watch last week's video, please do because I was so proud of that bioactive tank. It came out really nice and we did a background for it for the first time ever and I was super excited about it. Anyways, thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day and a wonderful vacation. Bye. Click. Ooh, that was loud. 
So just to preface anything that happens, every time I've tried to use them, they don't. So this is a something else. <laughs> so most adult leaves most. Should just wore these the whole time.